Lesson 2.3 Multiply Tens, Hundreds, Thousands. By understanding place value, we can multiply tens, hundred, thousands. Five times seventy can be re written as five times seven tens. We solve the basic fact five times seven is equal to thirty-five for five times seven tens, which is equal to thirty-five tens as 350. We rename the 35 tens as 350 by writing one zero after the basic fact. See? Five times 70 is equal to five times seven tens, which is equal to 35 tens, which is equal to 350. The number of zeros in the factors there's one zero in all of these factors, tells us how many zeros to put in the product. This strategy works for tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, and larger place values. Five times seven hundred is equal to five times seven hundreds, which is equal to thirty-five hundreds, which is equal to three thousand five hundred. We had two zeros in all of the factors, so there were two zeros in the product. Five times seven thousand, now we have three zeros. That's equal to five times seven thousands, which is equal to thirty-five thousands, which is equal to thirty-five thousand. We had three zeros when we looked in all the factors, so we have three zeros in the product. And we can also use quick drawings to help us. For four times three hundred, we can make little boxes. We can make little boxes with H for 100. We can even put a 100 in them for 100, couldn't we? We have 1, 2, 300, and then another 1, 2, 300, and another one, and another one. So we have four groups of 300. We can regroup all of these by circling 10 of them as 10 hundreds, which is equal to 1,000. We have two little hundreds left over. That's 1,200. Or we can count 12 hundreds, which is equal to 1,200. We can use a number line to multiply tens, hundreds, thousands, or larger place values. We can think of multiplication as repeated addition. Here we have 3 times 400. We can think of the basic fact 3 times 4. Our number line goes from 0 to 12. We Add four three times. We're at four. We add another four. We're at eight. We add another four. We're at twelve. We did it three times and we got twelve. That's our basic fact. Three times four equals twelve. We can do it with hundreds. We start at zero and we can see our number line goes up to 1,200. We skip 400, then another 400, then another 400, like we're adding 400 plus 400 plus 400 for repeated addition. And 3 times 400 is equal to 1,200. We can use patterns of basic facts and zeros. For each of these, the product is 10 times more. We start with 7 times 6, which is equal to 42. 7 times 60, we have 1 zero in the factors, so there's going to be 1 zero in the product. We have 42 with a zero, that's 420. 7 times 600, we have two zeros in the factors, so we have 42 with two zeros, 4,200. We have 7 times 6,000, now we have three zeros in these factors, so we're going to have 42 with three zeros, which is 42,000. Same with 9 times 6, it's equal to 54, so 9 times 60 is equal to 540. And 9 times 600 is equal to 5,400, and 9 times 6,000 is equal to 54,000. The number of zeros in the factors is how many zeros will be in the product. But we have to be careful using this strategy if there is already a zero in the product of the basic fact. For 6 times 5, which is equal to 30, we move to 6 times 50, there's only one zero in these factors. So there's only going to be one zero added to that 30. 
So 6 times 50 is equal to 300. So remember, however many zeros are in the factors will be the amount of zeros in the product. So if there's already a zero in the product, we ignore it and just leave it there. We're looking at how many zeros are in the factors. Here we have 2 in 6 times 500. So we add 2 to the 30, we get 3,000. Here we have three zeros in 6 times 5,000. So now the 30 has three zeros after it. So be very careful if there's already a zero in the product. We're looking for how many zeros are in the factors. We can rewrite 8 times 400 as 8 times 4 hundreds. 8 times 4 hundreds, looking at the basic fact, 8 times 4, that would be 32 hundreds, which would be 3,200. And we can solve 8 times 400 using the amount of zeros in the factors as the amount of zeros in the product. We have two zeros in the factor here, so there's going to be two zeros in the product. We have 3,200. And we can use reasoning to find a missing factor. We have blank times 9,000 is equal to 27,000. So we can think blank times 9 is equal to 27. We have three zeros here, so there's three zeros in the product. Three times nine is equal to 27, so three times 9,000. Six times some number is equal to 48,000. Look at, there's no zeros here. So there must be three zeros in that missing number for there to be three zeros here. We can think six times some number is equal to 48. Six times eight is equal to 48. So it must be 6 times 8,000. See how the three zeros are there? Because there's three zeros here. There had to be three zeros in that missing number. So since 6 times 8 is equal to 48, it must be 6 times 8,000 to equal 48,000. An inverse operation is an opposite operation. Multiplication and division are inverse operations because they undo each other. We can solve some number times 9,000 is equal to 27,000 by using division. We think 27 divided by 9 is equal to 3. We look at the 27 and the 9. So 3 times 9,000 is equal to 27,000. Mr. Lee sold 400 oranges each month in June and July. He sold 200 apples each month from August through October. How many oranges and apples did Mr. Lee sell during these five months? So if you look, it's got June, July, August, October, but it says five months. That's because it says through October. That means August, September, October. So those are our five months. We can multiply 400 times two for the two months of June and July. 400 times 2 is equal to 4 hundreds times 2. 4 times 2 is 8, so we have 8 hundreds. That's equal to 800 oranges for June and July. Next, we multiply 200 times 3 because he sold 200 apples in August, September, October. For the three months, 200 times 3 is equal to 2 times 3. See? For the basic fact, 2 hundreds times 3. That's equal to six hundreds or six hundred apples. But we're not done because it wants to know how many oranges and apples he sold during the five months. So we know he sold 800 oranges and 600 apples. Now, to find how many oranges and apples Mr. Lee sold during the five months, we add the products together, 800 plus 600. And that's the same as eight hundreds plus six hundreds. And eight plus six is 14. We have 14 hundreds or 1,400 oranges and apples. To solve this problem, we had to multiply to find the amount of oranges. Then we had to multiply to find the amount of apples. Then we needed to use addition to add the products together. We can even count the zeros in both factors to use this strategy. If we have 20 times 40, we look at the 2 times 4, which is 8. We have a 0 here and a 0 here. That's two zeros in the factors. We add two zeros 
to our product, we have 800. For 200 times 400, we look at the basic fact of 2 times 4, which is 8, and we have 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros in the factors, so there'll be 4 zeros in the product, we have 80,000. For 20 times 50, we look at the basic fact of 2 times 5, which is equal to 10. We have two zeros in the factors. We had two zeros after the 10. We have 1,000. For 200 times 500, we have the basic fact of 2 times 5 again, which is 10. Now we have four zeros in the factors. So we add four zeros to the product after the 10. So we have 100,000. And remember the order of operations. We learned that back in third grade math in video 7.11, and I'll have a link in the description for that in case you forgot about it because that was quite a while ago. But what we do is parentheses first, then we multiply or divide from left to right, then we add or subtract from left to right. So if we see three times six plus four, well, the six plus four is in parentheses. We need to do that first. And six plus four is 10. That means we have three times 10, which is equal to 30. For this one, we have 10 plus two times six, we need to multiply or divide before we add or subtract. So we need to do the 2 times 6 first, which is 12. That means our equation is 10 plus 12, which is equal to 22. Now next year in fifth grade math, we're going to learn that exponents are done after the parentheses. Then we multiply or divide, then add or subtract. So in fifth grade, we're going to learn that there's another step in between here. So remember, when we're multiplying tens, hundreds, and thousands, however many zeros are in the factors will be the amount of zeros in the product. In our next lesson, 2.4, we are going to estimate and do rounding for multiplication. I hope I see you there. Have a wonderful day. Bye.